All right, so let's go over the instructions for today. It's Wednesday, May the 5th. Um, just so you guys know, today is my youngest daughter's birthday. So we have some birthday things to do later, possibly, we'll see. But anyway, her name is Carrie. So if you want to, you can all like get on the recording and say, happy birthday, Carrie, and I'll show it to her later. <laughs> Tell her I said happy birthday. Okay, yeah, you guys can definitely send uh, little messages. That'll be fine. All right, so let's move on. All right, so I have not posted the assignments for today message. Um, I was kind of trying to judge that based on what we did this morning. So I will post that one later. But on classwork, don't forget, it. always do the daily check-in. That's really important, whether you are traditional or virtual. Uh, reflections, you should have done the one about argument, a bad day, and then be good. That's due to, uh, I have them do the day after, but you should be working on it today. And if you can, it would be good to go ahead and finish everything for the rest of the week. All right, the Cyber Patriot assignments. You should have already finished Unit Zero. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you something here. Um, we only have eight people that turned that in. I don't know which eight people, but there's only eight people that actually turned that in. So, oh wait, where did we go here? All right, so that tells me that a lot of you need to get that done. And right here, we only have seven people that turned that in. And then, uh, hold on one second. I need to, I need to move a puppy. Come here, come here, midnight. This is midnight. Midnight's about to go in the other room. No. Okay. I'm sorry. That had to happen. Okay. Again, on these case studies right here, only seven people turned that in. And on this quiz, um, th I graded 13 and five more turned it in. But what you need to understand is that for you to get a grade on this, you have to turn these in on Google Classroom. So some of you need to go and make sure sure that you're getting these things turned in. Same thing for unit one, uh, graded three and there's six turned in waiting to be graded. Right here, only three people have turned that in. So that tells me that a lot of you need to catch up on getting these things turned in. Um, all you had to do was type a document with some notes in it. This one you had to answer the case studies. This was a quiz. Remember on the quiz, you type in the private comments box your score that you make whenever you see your score on TeacherMade. And then you click mark is done, turn it in, whatever it says on there. I'm pretty sure they say mark is done. And then on unit one, the same thing. Make sure that you're getting those things turned in. Uh, we're going to talk about unit two today. Uh, so I have put in grades on the cell phone policy. If you did not sign the piece of paper or do the electronic form, you have a zero, so you need to take care of that. If you sign the piece of paper but not the electronic form, you have a 70. If you sign the piece of paper and or I have the electronic form, you have a 100 for that. So you need to make sure that those things are squared away as well. Uh, your past due assignments, these things are past due. The grace period has passed. The best that you can score on these is a 70. And yes, all assignments have to be turned in on Google Classroom. Some people are still turning in things on Schoology. And every time I put, uh, see something like that, I'm sending you a comment that says, turn it in on Google Classroom, because I'm not going to grade on Schoology. It's going to all have to be happening right here on Google Classroom. 
All right, before I move on to today's lesson, does anybody have any questions about um, past due or any of the other things that I just talked to you about on, on grades or how to turn things in? Put your hand up if you got a question. I'm assuming that you guys can hear me today. The connection seems to be quite a bit better. Okay, then I'm going to assume that you guys know what to do and uh, know what's expected and you're gonna get those things turned in. I'm sorry, what? We don't have no questions. Okay, all right, so we're gonna move on then with today's lesson. What you need to do is you need to go to this unit two, cyber ethics and online safety. You're gonna view the assignment you're going to create a Google Doc and you're going to take notes as we go along. Remember, you can open this PDF file on your computer as well and you can copy and paste as we go and write other little notes uh, into that document. And when you're done, hopefully by the end of this video, you can turn in the document and be done with it and I can grade it this afternoon. I will do my best to update grades in iNow by tomorrow for you because I think we have enough things that people have uh, had enough time to get things turned in. So it's time to update those grades. Uh, if you haven't turned stuff in, don't be surprised if your grade isn't what you want it to be. All right. So let's take a look at Unit 2. No no, you need me, I got to run over to uh, Mr. Freeman's class real quick. Okay, okay. we're good. We're They're just going to be listening to this. Okay, um, again, guys, all you have to do is open up this document, uh, make sure you open the assignment, create a Google Doc where you can take notes. And I'm going to go over the assignment here so it's a little bit bigger on your screen. All right, it's unit two, cyber ethics and online safety. You've already seen a little bit of this stuff, but I'm gonna go through it from the cyber patriot point of view here, just to make sure that we're covering everything that they want covered this way. Um, section one is on cyber ethics. The term netiquette is commonly accepted rules of how to behave online. Netiquette is a very important definition you should have that definition in your notes. Um, some of the things over here that have to do with netiquette, do not spam forums, chat rooms, or social media sites with useless or repeated information. Uh, not only is it annoying, but it can jam up servers if you do that. Do not pretend to be someone else. That should go in any type of life, whether it's your virtual or your face-to-face -face life. Do not post or distribute illegal material. Do not use abusive or threatening language. Mind your manners. Act like you know how to behave. Um, be respectful, be courteous. Do not try to obtain personal information about someone. Um, you have to be careful with what information you give out and you definitely don't want to be collecting information about other people. People that you meet online, you may never meet in person and it's okay if you don't know their personal information and it's okay that you don't share your personal information not everybody out there is your friend uh, my kids when they were little they were very outgoing and you know it was a sad lesson whenever you know they had to learn sometimes that not everybody's your friend well there are a lot of predators and very bad people out there that you have to be um, cautious about and so for your own safety and for the safety of your family do not share personal information please be very careful about that uh cyber bullying um, we'll come up with a good definition for that later on and you may have one in that chapter three text that's on the uh the other assignments out of that other book it says it affects 29.2% of students every year, and that number is growing. 
that can be in the form of insulting texts or emails, rumors sent via email, fake profiles, embarrassing photos or videos. Why is it harmful? It's anonymous and there is no escaping it. It can be done 24 seven. The problem with cyberbullying is this. When people bully you in person or bully someone in person, there is that moment at which that person can go home and be away from it. But when you're talking about cyberbullying and you're constantly connected to social media and things like that, there is no escaping it. Ms. Uh, who's, it's me. Yes. Says, can you send him something so he can come and join? Oh. Uh, yeah. Just email him the link. Yeah, that'd be fine. Okay. Hold on one second and I will do that. Um, hold on. Let me find my email. There it is. Okay. Let me go back to my Google Classroom here. Uh, we may need to, I may need to record this again in second period just because we got so much going on right now. Copy link address. And where's he at? Okay, let's go back. Um, here we are right here. Again, cyberbullying. There is no escaping it, and it's anonymous. People can be anybody they want to be on the screen, and you don't, you know, they can hide from it. When you bully in person, there's no way to hide from that. But cyberbullying is completely different because they can be anybody, um, and they can be anonymous. So if you know any instances of cyberbullying, you do need to tell someone. Uh, just a little side note, a few years ago, I worked at a charter school in Texas that served the juvenile detention center in Granbury. And this juvenile detention center, you know, I, I loved my kids there. Don't get me wrong. Some of them just made some really bad choices and bad situation, bad timing, made some bad choices, but they were still good kids. Um, we had an instance where in the town where two girls cyber bullied another girl until she attempted suicide. Those two young ladies were moved to the juvenile detention center to face formal charges. Um, cyber bullying is not okay. And there is a way to combat that. One of the things that you can do if you're being cyber bullied or you know someone who is, just block those people. But at the same time, you know, um, you can also let your internet service provider know or whatever social media platform it is that someone is cyber bullying and they will go in and take steps and sometimes they can identify them as well. So make sure that you're not doing those types of things. Make sure that if you know someone who is, uh, that you counsel them, hey, that's not such a great idea. Or if you know someone who's being harmed, that you let someone know. All right, let's see what's next. Um, Cyberbullying, if it happens to you, do not respond in any messages, posts, or emails. Block offenders. Document and report the behavior so it can be addressed. Take screenshots. That's a good way. Flag the content so other people aren't hurt by it. This is something that you will probably need to go through. And I think it would be a very good idea if you put this particular slide into your notes as well. Make sure that you understand that there are steps that you can take. And one thing that they don't list here is you need to tell an adult. You need to let somebody know that it's happening. All right. Cyberbullying. Report it. To schools, inform your school of any cyberbullying as you would with other types of bullying. Provide screenshots or records. Yes, definitely. Um, I see more and more school policies at the different schools that I've been at that they take cyberbullying very seriously. Whether it happens during school hours or outside of school hours, you're still targeting 
a, a cyber bully is still targeting a student of that school and it's taken way more seriously than it was in the past uh, to your parents and law enforcement especially if it involves threats of violence explicit messages or photos taking a photo or video of someone in a place where he or she would expect privacy stalking and hate crimes these are all types of situations where you need to make sure that you are letting school your school know your parents and law enforcement if uh, any of these situations are involved and i would highly suggest that you just copy and paste this entire slide right here into your document because all of the information right here is extremely important all right uh, again you can go back and you can copy and paste later or you can type whatever it is that you want to do but we're going to go ahead and go through the presentation um, this video is being recorded so if you want to go back and watch it later you can all right the ten commandments of computer ethics you saw these on the unit zero it, where it said do not well they have replaced that with thou shalt not and these are the ten commandments of computer ethics thou shalt not use a computer to harm other people you know that takes care of the cyber bullying and things like that thou shalt not interfere with other people's computer work remember the case we talked about where he crippled the whole city because he wouldn't give up the password thou shalt not snoop around in other people's computer files that is not polite. You don't go read somebody else's diary. You don't need to snoop around in their computer files. Thou shalt not use a computer to steal. Thou shalt not use a computer to bear false witness. Bearing false witness means lying, spreading falsehoods. Thou shalt not copy or use proprietary software for which you have not paid. That means don't go use programs that aren't yours. Thou shalt not use other people's computer resources without authorization or proper compensation. If it's somebody's job to do certain things on the computer, um, you can't just go appropriate their resources. You have to ask them, is it okay if I use this? And sometimes you have to be willing to pay for that. Thou shalt not appropriate other people's intellectual output. We talked about that also on Unit Zero, talked about intellectual property and how it's protected now and how important it is to people. Thou shalt think about the social consequences of the program you are writing or the system you are designing. If you become a programmer, if you become someone who does these things that writes all this code and things like that, you need to think about the social consequences of whatever it is that you're writing or being asked to write. And make sure, because one of the things that you're not supposed to do is harm other people. Because commandment 10 says, thou shalt always use a computer in ways that ensure consideration and respect for your fellow humans. All right, consideration and respect. These are things that are very, very important, whether you are in person or whether you are in a virtual community. Let's see, section two, online safety. All right, uh, so before we move on, are there any questions about section one? Just put your hand up if you have a question. All right, so we're gonna move on to section two and make sure that we get through that section of notes. Um, online safety, the basics which means this should be things that, you know, kind of you've probably heard over and over again, but definitely should involve quite a bit of common sense. Safety online, the basics. Chat only with trusted, verified individuals. Don't talk with somebody even in a chat room that you don't know. Uh, I know that you guys are on social media and you chat with your friends. You text each other, you FaceTime each other and all that kind of stuff, but you know who those people are. Don't chat with someone who's trying to chat you up because uh, that you've never met or that could possibly have a fake profile because those people are dangerous. They are predators. You have to be careful with those kind of people. And again, not everyone is your friend, even online. Uh, never publicly share these things online. Do not share your password, social security number, your student ID number, or other personally identifiable information. 
I want you to write down personally identifiable information into your notes. And I want you to understand that this is something that people could use to identify you with. First of all, if you want to use your first name online, that's fine, but don't add your last name. An initial might be okay, but it's best just to use your first name. Uh, do not put your address on there. Do not put your phone number on there. Do not put things on there where they could identify you. And it's probably best not to even put a birth date on there. Now, I know that some sites will ask for it because they need to verify your age, but be careful with how you share your birth date. Never share your password. Always log out when you're done. Don't leave your computer open and your stuff logged in. Never post anything you do not want public. You might think you're being safe and limiting your posts to only friends, but anything you post can be easily copied and pasted and sent to someone else. All right. Remember that when you put things out there online, it's really hard to stop them from going any further. Even if it was posted by mistake, um, or even if you aren't the one that posted it and someone got into your computer and posted it with your name, it's still hard to stop. It's very difficult to stop those things. So be very careful about what you post. Um, think about what you want to say, then type what you want to say, and then read what you said and make sure that it still says what you wanted it to say. And just be very careful about hitting that enter button because you don't want to share things online that are not appropriate or could be hurtful or harmful to other people. Uh, risky sites. Um, some of these places are, are things that you go to on a regular basis, but you have to be careful about your personally identifiable information. Online shopping, you want to be careful with where you sh shop. And you want to make sure that it's places that are reputable and that protect your data. Uh, you need to be careful on social media. Again, we, you guys are on social media a lot. And that first term that we talked about in this presentation, netiquette, you need to be very aware of your netiquette when you are on social media. Any other website that requires personally identifiable information, these sites are enjoyable and useful. Just make sure you are being extra careful when you visit them. Again, do not put information out there that people don't need to see. Uh, safe browsing. Uh, do not use public Wi-Fi to access risk sites. Now, if you're on a public Wi-Fi network, um, they'll let you know, hey, this is a public network. Are you sure you want to go to this particular site or whatever? Uh, they'll remind you. So you have to be careful because if it's public Wi-Fi, you don't know who else could be on that same Wi-Fi system. Uh, check the address for spoofs. Um, we're going to talk more about um website addresses later on and show you some of the different ways that they try to trick you. But you just need to make sure that you are being very careful and very cautious about different websites and make sure that you are actually on the website you need to be on. Use a secure website, especially when submitting uh, personally identifiable information. Look for an S after the HTTP. Look for a padlock in the browser address bar. Look for a green background or green text. All right. So um, again, we're going to talk more about the safe browsing later on because there's a whole unit on that, on the different types of ways that they try to get your information. And we'll be looking at those later. Uh, different browser tools. Uh, let your computer automatically update, especially your school computer. Uh, sometimes it'll say we need to update something and that's your IT department updating it because your school computer is very protected. Use and regularly update built-in safety features. Uh, your pop-up blockers, your anti-spyware, virus and phishing software, those things, you want to make sure that you let those update and you let them run their course to make sure that there's no things on your computer that are unsafe. Do not use save password or remember me functions. 
I know that I personally am guilty of doing this because I have so many sites that I go to, but it's not a good practice to do that. So um, you need to make sure that you are being very, very cautious about those particular functions. Internet Explorer is more frequently targeted and has more security flaws than any other browser. You guys probably use uh, Chrome, so that's probably what you need to be on the most, is Chrome. Let's see, all right, um, somebody have a question? Malik, do you have a question? If not, I need you to kill your mic, thank you. All right, let's take one more look at the. All right, so those are the browser tools that you have that help keep you safe online. Social media tips. This is probably the most important part of this whole topic. Be picky. Only accept or follow friends you know in real life. Do not be friends with people you don't know. They could have very fake profiles. If it's not somebody that you would actually hang out with in real life, do not be friends with them on social media. Do not post your location. Be careful with apps. Games and geo-tracking apps may give away your location. Um, I know that there was a big deal that um, about uh, Snapchat and what was the other one? Maybe Instagram too. You have to be careful. You need to turn off the part of those apps that tell uh, your location. You don't want your location out there because people can find you. And I'm telling you again, not everyone is your friend. Uh, assume everything you post online is permanent. Colleges and employers check social media accounts. I cannot tell you the number of news stories that have gone out lately um, and in the past year or so of uh, uh, young men and young women losing scholarships or losing jobs um, because of things that they post on social media. You need to be very careful about what you post. Don't overshare. Just because a site asks for information doesn't mean it's re yes. Uh, just because a site asks for information doesn't mean it's required to set up an account. If there's a piece of information you don't want to give and it's not a required piece of information for that site, you don't have to put it in there. And then customize and update your security settings. The default okay. settings are weak. Um, one of those things. Hello, do we have a question? All right, again, customize and update your security settings. Your default settings um, sometimes are not the best. Um, a lot of your social media and different places like that will give you security questions. Um, answer those security questions so that if you ever need to get in there or you need to update something, and sometimes they'll contact you and say, hey, um, did you attempt to change this part of it? And if you did not, you say, no, that was not me. And that way they can check your account and they can make sure that nobody has um, compromised your account and that everything is safe and secure in there. All right. Um, so at this point, we've gone over today's presentation. You will probably need to go back and either copy and paste certain parts and get them into your notes. Uh, you can type your notes. If you have questions, type those in there too. And then what we'll do is make sure that you get those turned in on Google Classroom. Do not forget that everything has to be turned in on Google Classroom for you to get a grade. Malik, honey, I'm recording. Turn your camera off. Malik, turn off your camera. Oh, that's all right. Just I don't want your face out there, okay? Um, again, make sure you're turning everything in on Google Classroom. Uh, let me know if you have questions. You can tell um, Miss B if you have questions. She can text them to me. You can stop the video and write down things you need to write down oh, as you yeah. go. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right. At this point. Are there any questions before I stop the recording? You may have no, a question. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. I know they have no questions. All right. Then I'm going to stop the recording.
And I'm going to stay here for just a minute or two. And if you guys have specific things you need or specific Amen. questions, 